بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته my name is Tariq Khalid I like to welcome to our program here at Sharjah Media Corporation getting to know your lord getting closer to Allah getting to understand who he is what is important for you in this life and what is important for you in the hereafter what are the things that we should be doing on a daily basis that many of us don't know or many of us forget to do or many of us are just, just negligent. We're uh, busy with our worldly affairs, and as a result of that, we just don't take care. So let's talk about this a little bit, and wherever it is that you want, to, wherever it is that you may be in the world, I want to ask you a question, and, and I'd like to hear from people on this. Do you feel on a daily basis that your everyday affairs and the environment in which you live is inviting you to remember Allah, remember God on a regular basis? Or do you feel that where it is that you're living, wherever you're working or going to school, your, in your daily affairs is inviting you to something other than the remembrance of God? Now, many people, they don't think about this. They don't say, well, you know, I pray uh, when I feel like it. If I don't feel like praying, I don't pray. Uh, I, I can remember God any time in any, any condition, any set of circumstances. Uh, that may very well be true. But I ask you a second question and relate it to yourself as a human. If someone is negligent in their behavior in reference to you, how will you relate to that person? Let's, for example, let's say you have a business and you have an employee and that employee is supposed to be at work at a prescribed time. He or she is supposed to do a certain amount of work in a particular time period and during that time period, they're not supposed to do anything else until they complete their work. And they're supposed to work for, let's say, eight hours a day. Let's say they, let's make it easy. Let's say they work from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., which means for those eight hours, unless there's prescribed breaks, okay, they should be working. And at 4 p.m., uh, they should leave promptly at 4, not at 3.30, not at quarter to 4 as an example, okay. but you find that that individual in the workplace, the work that you prescribe for him or her to do or that you feel is fair within eight hours is not done. But yet and still, uh, when it comes time to be paid, that they're expecting full salary. Now, as an employer, how would you feel about that? Just think about it. And let's say you had deadlines to meet. At the end of the week, you had to have a certain amount of work to be done because you have a client. And that client is paying you based on getting that work done at the end of the week. But your employee is not upholding his part of this contract. If we put it in that perspective, if we say, and we relate this to our creator and sustainer. And we, if we do understand that Allah, God, is the one and only God. And that he is truly the creator and sustainer. That nothing happens without his knowledge. Nothing happens without his permission. And whatever we are receiving in terms of wealth, whatever we are receiving in terms of life, is prescribed for us. It doesn't mean that we don't work doesn't mean that we don't try to take care of our health. Of course we do. But at the same time, it is prescribed for us. We have choices. So what choice would you make in this set of circumstances? So similarly, Allah requires for us, and he says more or less that he has granted the Muslims something that he hasn't granted to any other people with the exception of the prophets, and that is praying five times a day. 
mandatory prayers. Five times a day, every day. There are some exceptions for women, but there are no exceptions for men in relationship to this. And he doesn't have to give us anything, but he's promised us that he will make our sustenance, one of, the, one of the things for praying five times a day, that he will make our sustenance come easy and that he'll make it easy for us in the grave and that he'll make it easy for us on the day of judgment just by establishing the prayer on a regular basis. This is a pillar of our faith. And there are, of course, many other benefits just from establishing the prayer. So if someone says, well, brother, why is it that you feel you have to thank Allah, you have to praise him, you have to remember him abundantly? We don't have to do that for human beings. That's right. We don't have to do that for human beings. And that we need to put that in perspective. They are human beings. And every person, regardless of his status in society, will be judged. And all of the judges and all of the kings and all the presidents and prime ministers, all of the tyrants, all of the people who have ruled throughout history, the conquerors, who people say the great conquerors and put great in front of their names. No one will want to admit to this or these titles. None of the judges who have judged will want to admit that he's a judge on the day of judgment. When Allah calls all of those people who had these responsibilities during their time, no one will want to admit that they had this responsibility. So this is a warning for us now to be accountable and to remind those who are in positions of power or influence that you will be judged. Be very careful about how you live your life today. This world, as we all know, is temporary. No one leaves it alive. And in the grave, we have nothing but our deeds. None of the wealth will go with you. Even though there are people today being buried with their wealth as though they're the pharaohs of old, that this is going to benefit them in the hereafter. No, in many instances, this will be fire for them. If they had used this wealth in a proper manner, it could have been a benefit for them even in the grave. But this is a misunderstanding, misdirection, that people today are following. So we're finding that in today's world, there are many people who are purposely inviting the masses away from the remembrance of Allah. And in some circles, it has become popular. And people laugh and they joke about this. They laugh and they joke about their disbelief. And this is a very serious affair. And there are a few people who will call them to enjoin righteousness. That the general population that says leave them, they're worthless. They won't change. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But surely... Allah's punishment is severe. And the people who laugh and joke about this, they will not be laughing. And they will not be joking when the angel of death comes and takes their soul. And this is not a threat. And it is not a theory either. It is a reality that all of us are faced with. Whether we accept this reality or not, we have a choice to. We have a choice. But for the people of disbelief, I suggest that you ponder on this deeply and most deeply, more deeply than anything that you have taken time out to think about. And people says, well, why is this? I'm busy. Why should I think about what is going to be my demise? Why should I worry about what I'm doing? I'm living a fantastic life. Everything is easy for me. I have everything that I want or everything that I need, and above, above and beyond that. So why should I take the time out to remember Allah? So let's see what Allah says. 
and with the Prophet ﷺ sitting in relationship to this. And Abu Hurairah really reported the Prophet ﷺ said more or less, he who utters a hundred times in a day these words, La ilaha illallah, wahduhu la sharika lahu la al-muq, wa la al-hamd, wa huwa la quli shayin qadir. Which means more or less, there is no true God except Allah. He is one and he has no partner with him. His is the sovereignty and his is the praise and he is omnipotent. He will have a reward equivalent to that for emancipating ten slaves. A hundred good deeds will be recorded to his credit. One hundred of his sins will be blotted out from his scroll and he will be safeguarded against the devil on that day till the evening. And no one will exceed him in doing more excellent good deeds except someone who has recited this much more than him. And he who utters subhanallah wa bihamdihi Allah is free from imperfection and he is the praise. 100 times a day his sins will be obliterated even if they are equal to the extent of the foam of the ocean. It's collected by Bukhari and Muslim. So we see for the simple words which are light on the tongue but very heavy in reward. If we relate this and some people say, well, I can't say that, brother. Uh, that's Arabic. I, I don't know those words. Well, some of the things that I hear people say, may Allah protect us from this, some of the filthy language that I hear that has become common today. And when people tell me that, well, I can't remember those words, that's Arabic. I answer to you, you can fill your mouth with filth without a second thought. And you expect people to accept that as though it is normal. But at the same time, when we're offering you something that will benefit you in this life and benefit you in the hereafter, you refuse it saying, well, it's difficult for me. I don't think I can do that. So we're asking a person who says, well, how do you relate that intellectually. How do you interrelate the two things? And I'm harping on this invitation to indecent behavior and conduct that we're seeing become prevalent in many places, in many societies, uh, and in different levels of the society. And along with that is disrespect for the elderly. And I'm not saying that just because I'm an older person. But, of course, we learn this at children, that you should respect your elders. And, of course, this is part of our religion. It is incumbent upon us to respect those who are older than us. So we're seeing this level of disrespect. And, of course, it goes without saying, if we disrespect the creator and sustainer, then everything else is secondary, isn't it? And we're seeing the increase in this in many places in the world. We're seeing people curse Allah openly. Someone uh, sent me a clip on a gym shoe where some factory had written the name of Allah in Arabic on the bottom of the shoe. So whoever walks with those shoes would walk on the name of Allah unknowingly. This kind of Assault, we're finding that people of evil persuasion. But I'm addressing not so much the evil people. The people who are evil are being misguided by Satan. And some of them call themselves worshipers of the devil. They're satisfied in this. They don't have a clue about what they're facing. And in relationship to that, they don't have an idea about what the hellfire really is. And they don't have an idea of what state, state Allah can put them in even before death. Just imagine, and, and we've seen some people who we know were very evil, and I won't mention names because some of those people were very famous globally. And Allah knows best about what their status was. But they were comatose for years. And these people were the evilest of the evil. Their acts. So we know without question that that person 
This was a torment for him before the grave. And this is the danger that the promotion of this evil behavior and the acceptance of it and also many people, there are many good people who are mute, who are afraid to say anything, let alone take steps against it. And of course, this, what does it do? It spreads then. If no one's willing to say anything or to take action which was in their capability, meaning to first of all, not like it in your heart and to pray and ask Allah to correct the society, correct the people who are following this path. That's the minimal thing that anyone can do. And we should all do that. And many of us in situations where we're helpless and the situation in many instances is reached a state of hopelessness. The people have gone so far away that the general public is saying, leave them. These people are like wild animals. We don't know at any given time Allah can destroy them. But Allah might destroy us first because we're aware of the condition of those people and we have accepted that by not going to them, not mentioning to them that there is an alternative to this behavior, that you have choices. You can change. You can improve your life. You can become the favorite of Allah if you choose. But, and we've seen this in many instances. We've gone to people who, when we talk to them, they said, no one comes to us. No one talks to us. Thank you for at least mentioning these things to me. I will think about it. But no one approaches them. As a result, they continue on their path of destruction. So we're saying to everyone out there, think about your condition presently, what it is that you want to do in your life and realize that this life is very short. My name is Tariq Khalid. I'd like to thank you for joining us at Sharjah Media Corporation on getting to know Allah, getting closer to Allah. And we hope and we pray that through Allah's mercy and grace that people are connecting due to these programs. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.